Somebody, somebody wrote and said they wanted to see my Corvette. I showed you pictures of it, so probably thought it'd be a good idea if you guys to drive it in and you can see it. Uh, it's a driver, it's not a show car, and it could use a paint job. I had it painted 35 years ago and the paint's starting to go now, but it's still pretty good. It's a 283. It's got two four barrel carburetors on it with um, solid lifters and a, a three quarter race cam. So it runs, it runs pretty good. It's a lot of fun to drive, obviously. like it collectors pretty nice huh with a new paint job that would be a show car but uh, I don't know whether I'll ever get around to that it's all I can do to maybe drive it once or twice a year but it, but it sure is a lot of fun got a trunk here all junk in there but nice condition so with that I think I'll shut it off and Alright, you ready to do the video? Yeah, let's do the video now. Enough of that. It's too hot out here. <laughs> okay, Pop. Well, collectors, uh, here we are. Uh, I thought I would show you that uh, Corvette. Uh, somebody rode in and said they wanted to see it. You just saw pictures of it before. But uh, it's a nice car and it really runs good. It sounded uh, great. I, uh, I just wish I had more time to use it. This is the first time I've had it out in over a year, so that's no good. Uh, but it still runs fine. I had it out yesterday and put about 10 miles on it, and uh, uh, it was a lot of fun. So, anyhow, another trinket in the Whitman household. Boy, you got so much stuff around here, I'm telling you. But here we are, guys. Um, I think we're on uh, episode number 88. Is that correct, Bob? Yeah, 88. 88, yeah. And uh, today is, uh, according to the Gates English calendar here, today is the 21st of August. So once again, I want to remind you that the Mac show is coming up in, oh, about three weeks now. So I hope everybody can uh, can get out there because it'll be a worthwhile event. We haven't really had any, any shows all summer in the, the Mac show and the middle of September kind of kicks off the uh, the collecting season so there'll be a lot of people there a lot of people from Europe and so forth and uh, it's a great great occasion to meet other collectors um, find some good stuff and if you're especially if you're a new collector uh, to be able to walk around a show and be able to see things touch them uh, ask questions about them uh, it's a great way to learn and it's an experience that you can only get by uh, by going to shows so I hope to see a lot of um, new collectors there this year I know there's a lot of you guys out there because I get emails all the time stuff they'll say what should I collect <laughs> you know, I love that question what am I supposed to say to that uh, like I always say whatever you choose to collect uh, buy the best thing that you can afford 
and in the best condition. That's basically what it and, comes down uh, to. Does, that doesn't <laughs> matter whether you're talking about a, a cap or a sword or a, a dagger or a, a belt buckle. Uh, it doesn't matter. The condition is always uh, uh, what you want to look for if you can. Um, also, getting started, I know a lot of people are on uh, limited budgets. Uh, so instead of uh, being able to afford a $12 or a $1,400 really special uh, SA dagger, uh, there's many daggers, SA daggers in the $500 and $600 category. They're still original, still nice. They just show a little more age maybe, but it's a good place to start. And remember too, as you get older and got a little more money, you can upgrade those pieces or whatever. So anyhow, just get started. You see the kind of fun that uh, Ab and I have every week with this, and I've been doing this for you know, 50 years, and I, I still enjoy it just as much as I did when I started, and you will too. It's a lifelong hobby. I don't care whether you're 60 or whatever, or whether you're 20. Uh, once you get into it, it, um, it is really riveting. Um, I don't want to say it's like a drug, but in a way it is. Once you start buying a couple of pieces, uh, it's, uh, you go, well, gee, I've got this now. Oh, I'd like to get that other piece now. And before you know it, you've got seven or eight or 12 of them, or some guys, five dozen of them. So uh, uh, it's, um, it's a lot of fun. And with that, I think we, uh, we need a drink. How about you, Ob? You, you thirsty, are you? Sure. Sure. I don't think I ever asked you that. But you didn't say you were. But <laughs> it's, five, it's five o'clock in England. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Yeah, I know it's a dumb question, but uh, you know, guys, we like to we like to have a little pop here while we're doing the video. It kind of loosens us up a little bit. We don't drink too much. Just maybe about three quarters of this bottle before the video's done, but. But it's it's okay. I yeah. think a lot of the booze evaporates during the yeah it does the yeah with all this hot air going yeah. on here uh, <laughs> uh, probably a lot of it does evaporate. I don't know, Ob. I don't want to give you too much uh, diet soda there. Yeah, don't don't water it down. No, I don't want to water it down at all. Just a touch. So there's that. I don't have a stir, so we'll just shake it a little bit. I could use a Bob Burns cutter no, in there, do that. but I'll, I'll spare you that. Don't get it on my uh, Wehrmacht uh, blanket here. This is is that what this is, a yeah. Wehrmacht blanket? Yeah, pull the uh, the trim up on by your uh, knees oh, yeah. there. Oh yeah, I see what you're saying there, yeah. Yeah, we're using some real stuff here, guys. See that? I bet this kept many a soldier plenty warm outside of uh, Moscow or someplace, you know? And this is for sale, but it's not on the website yet. <laughs> okay. It's an old one that just yeah, kind of well, fell around on the wayside. If it's not on the website, everybody knows it's for sale. I mean, you know, how, how can you sell anything if it's not on the website? Oh, well. <coughs> Anyhow. So, we'll get to unboxing here. We didn't get a lot of stuff in because we are in the, in the middle of the summer and guys are on vacation and things are a little slow. But we'll show you what we got and here's to you. We forgot the coasters again. Oh, the coasters. I can't get any rings on this either, so. <laughs> no, uh, maybe we ought to get some coasters. Yeah, I'll have to take a break. Sorry. <laughs> okay, collectors, we're, we're ready to roll again. Uh, we got a couple of coasters. I remember the last video, we forgot them and we cut up a piece of cardboard and it uh, doesn't look very classy, but we don't want to get uh, water all over this uh, original um, Wehrmacht blanket. Although I would say in its day it probably had plenty of water all over it. Among other things, mm. yeah. Yeah, among other things. Oh, that drink's good. Your drink all right? Oh, yeah. Alright, we'll get started here. Just I just want to show you one thing. Uh, some of the dumb things that you, you get involved with. Uh, this came in and uh, as you can see it's a uh, it's uh, an original um, envelope for a second class Iron Cross and it also has a, uh, a maker mark on the back that you probably can't see on the video 
uh, but the maker mark is Klein and Deutzer. And um, so, you figure, well, oops, why is the bottom broken out of the envelope, you know? And then you think, well, gee, that seems strange, because when you, when you look at the, when you look at the cross, it looks, uh, it looks like it's almost uh, brand new. So the first thing you think, well, gee, uh, I guess maybe somebody just put this envelope with the with this nice iron cross because it looks so nice. Uh, but that's something to you know right away. Why is that? You know. So we look at this iron cross, and uh, at first glance, it looks like it's totally mint and brand new. Um, but if you kind of look at the um, uh, the silver part of the edges. Uh, notice that there's different sizes when you kind of look around it. Yeah, this is real fat, and then yeah. this is real. This this part's real skinny here. Yeah, and that's real fat here. It's totally yeah, misplaced. Yeah, so that would indicate that um, there was a misplacement of the center of the iron part of the iron cross, I guess. But uh, but that's something that um, it's not really noticeable unless you're looking for it. And then when you look on the other side of the Iron Cross, again, it's very beautiful, but there's one thing that's uh, missing on it. Uh, isn't there supposed to be an 1813 there, Rob? Yeah. Yeah, so I wonder why... I've wonder never why seen one without it. Never seen one without it, yeah. And I, and I looked at the, um, at the loop, uh, and sure enough, the loop is, um, is numbered 84, uh, and then we looked up the name of this producer on the envelope, Klein and Doisner, whatever their name is, and their number was not 84. <laughs> so, <laughs> then, then we got the black light out, and the ribbon, the, the ribbon glows like a brand new refrigerator. <laughs> I mean, it just, uh, so, you know, we don't know that much about metals, but, um, you know, stuff like this, it's just kind of, well, it's, I guess it's really annoying, um, especially when I bought it with a bunch of other stuff and didn't look at yeah. it, so I'm stuck, of course. You're the people. next guy on that hit list of that metal. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so, uh, but that's what happens, you know. Um, sometimes some of the simplest things, and um, all of those things we pointed out are pretty simple. I mean, why would you buy an iron cross that didn't have the 1813 date on the back leg? Well, I guess because I never looked. Well, you know, you, <laughs> you're you supposed to look at these things, Whitman. Remember that time we bought that metal bar and it was completely uh, post-war reissued without the swastikas on it and we didn't even notice? Yeah, we did. <laughs> <laughs> it was a metal bar that was to be worn after the war, made for after the war wear, which they didn't put swastikas on it. Ab and I didn't even notice because we're not really metal skies, but... I keep getting stuck on this you, stuff. You all just kind of see it there, but if you really look at it, the swastikas aren't there. It was like a Russian winter one and it didn't have a swastika yeah, on it. Yeah. It was very odd. But then yeah. you look at it, look at God, we're a bunch of dopes. Yeah, so it, um, <laughs> uh, this hobby can be a humbling experience at times. I mean, especially when you, you, look at, you look at that Iron Cross. And here's Whitman here. I'm supposed to know what I'm doing. And I guess what it was, I bought it with a lot of other stuff, and I, I just... Well, uh, well, why do you think he sent it to you? Uh, he yeah. never did. <laughs> I didn't look at it, and uh, Ob was the one that said, to, I think there's a few things wrong with this <laughs> Iron Cross. And we went over it yesterday, and uh, uh, all I could do was laugh, uh, although I was watching my money flying away. So, But that's the lesson. Um, try not to... Look at everything individually when you're buying things, and sometimes there's some, even if you don't know very much, uh, there's some really obvious things that, that you'll see. But if you're rush, 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 and buying a lot of stuff at one time, um, sometimes you overlook things, and uh, then when you get home, the, <laughs> <laughs> the true tragedy uh, sets in of it. You say, well, Gee, that was a pretty good show. I spent two thousand dollars, and fifteen hundred of it was on <laughs> fake stuff. You know, so you don't want to do that. That's well, not you know, the, we don't know anything. Maybe there was a producer that didn't put the date on there, but I can't recall ever. I, I've never heard of that. Yeah. But. 
I'm sure Any somebody will tell us if there is. But. Somebody will tell us. Yeah, you Iron Cross guys, if you want to write in and the, like, yeah, and, uh, the Acme, tell us how Acme Company in 1970 made them. Yeah, right. But you can tell us how stupid we are. And <laughs> what I try to do with metals, because I know I'm not a, a very good metals guy, I I try to get them all vetted before we put them up, and uh, and that. You know, we don't, just because we got stuck, we don't want you to get stuck on them. So we don't, uh, if you ever see anything that's not good in the metals on our website and you know for sure, write us and we'll get it off there because I don't want anybody else to get hurt. So anyhow, we'll go on, we'll start with, uh, let's see what we got here. I got a, I got a small envelope that, uh, I think uh, I think I know what it is, but I don't know for sure. But let me just carefully open this up and and see what we have here. Because if this is what I think it is, it's pretty it's pretty interesting item. Let's see. Uh, did I do that right? Well, <laughs> I guess I didn't. Let's try it this way. Let's see what happens this time. Boy, the Bob Burns cutter is really sharp. Mm. I've got to keep that away from my hand, my finger. Let's see what we got here. Come on, you sucker, you. Here we are. Oh, good, some cardboard. There must be something in this cardboard, guys. Let's see what we got here. Oh yeah, yeah, I remember this. Yeah, this is uh, this is really cool, guys. I'll show you this. I like um, I love period photographs. They don't lie. What you see on period photographs is what exists, and what you can guide yourself by sometimes too. And this is uh, this is really kind of a rare, rare picture. This is a whole group of marine SA guys all wearing daggers. Isn't that a fantastic picture? And some of you are saying, well yeah, but if it was in color we could see that they have gold fittings on their daggers. Well that's not true guys. Uh, I've only, I've never been able to verify that and I've had a number of um, SA Marine daggers that had dedications on them and so forth from a Marine unit and they did not have gilt fittings. So for what it's worth uh, they used regular SA daggers. The gilt fittings don't appear until the uh, uh, the chained NSKK Marine types. But anyhow isn't that a great photograph? Well that's a hell of a cap on there. I don't think I've ever seen that before. The cap? Yeah. You mean either the officer? Yeah, the officer's cap. Yeah. Is it naval? I can't really tell. Yeah, it's got the marine insignia okay. on, the, on the top of it there. That's a rare cap. Yeah, I'm sure. That marine insignia too is uh, is is quite rare. So, but um, I like I like photographs, and uh, I must have hundreds of uh, what I call in wear photographs that show uh, soldiers wearing daggers, and um, I find them. Uh, uh, extremely interesting, and as I say, what's on the back of that? Uh, SA <laughs> Marine in a German written. Oh, okay, cool. Yeah, I mean, not that we needed to know that, but uh, there it is. Is it dated? Uh, no, I don't think so. Uh, I don't know. I don't see a date on it, but but that's there you cool. go. Uh, but that's uh, that's a, a very interesting uh, picture. And uh, you'll look a long time to ever find anything like that. So when I see photographs like that, I, I try to I try to grab them because I think they're very very useful and could come in handy sometime for a reference book or whatever. So let's see what else we got here. Like I say, we don't have a lot of stuff in this video, but. But who knows? And I don't know what's in here. I like that photo. That was cool. You like that? Yeah. I'm not going to see that again. Yeah, I, I think that's a useful item. That comes from my good friend in England, Andrew Gates. He looks out for 
photos for me because he's in Europe. And a lot of these photographs, uh, of course, they pop up in Germany as the um, families are dying off now. The, uh, uh, the kids, they don't want these old photograph albums and somehow they get into the collecting circuit and then some of these uh, great pictures that, uh, of daggers and so forth and wear pop up and uh, it's just uh, it's wonderful. Uh, let's see what we got here. Oh, looks like a bayonet, guys. We see a lot of bayonets, don't we? Well, of course, there were more enlisted men than officers. Mm -hmm. ah, yeah, that's a good one. And, of course, the bayonet's in the scabbard backwards. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, I say, how many, every video, there's only about 50 50 with this anymore. Yeah. Why would you put it in the right way? Well, it has a has a pretty nice hilt on it. Oh, looks like we got some interesting, uh, lots of interesting things here. The blade is just a little bit, a um, little bit spotted, a little bit of age on it, but it's not too bad. And then on the other side, um, uh, first, that's interesting. We can see that it's um, it's a class piece, but it's uh, the Peter Dan or not class Krebs, Krebs yeah. Peter Dan Krebs, with the lobster mark, which we very very seldom see. I don't want to be on uh, that. No. So that's a that's a, a rare maker mark, and it just has an etching of um, in memory of his service time. Uh, does it look factory? Yeah, it's factory done, but there's nothing else on it. Just the, uh, just the uh, minor error. What is it, knob? It's not minor error. No, no, no. no. Uh, Erenerong. Erenerong on minor dine site. Yeah. Yeah. So it's uh, the van. That's not in the best of condition, but it's still. Uh, it's quite a rare item. It's something you don't see. I don't ever remember seeing anything like that. Okay, that's one down. Well, okay guys, we'll go to the next box here and see what we got. You know, while I think of it too, while I'm looking at a priority mailbox, uh, remember that box that arrived that uh, the daggers were missing from it and uh, there was a little note from the post office, sorry. Unfortunately, uh, yes, I remember. Um, unfortunately, yeah. Well, those have never turned up. So it appears that it wasn't uh, just an accident that the daggers fell out of the box. Uh, apparently, um, a postal employee stole the daggers because they never turned up. And uh, I think there was seven daggers in there. One of them was a full essay room. And a couple personalized armies. Personal, yeah, a lot so, of personalized armies. It was really a shame. We'll have to go back and post them again and uh, show yeah. the viewers. Hey, keep an eye yeah, out, you know? know? They might be... Uh, this bum stealing some of these stuff. Yeah. But, let's see what we got here, guys. Uh, I got a free trash bag. Mm. That's always good. Yeah. I hope it's not trash that's inside. <laughs> <laughs> open it right in here. Yeah. Wouldn't that be funny if there's a box of trash? Oh yeah, that'd be great. <laughs> Some dead cat or something. <laughs> yeah, that'd be great. Yeah. <laughs> I need a few drinks after that one, I'll yeah. tell you if that ever happened. <laughs> dead cat. Well, let's see what we got here. We're getting there, guys. I'm going to figure out this bow we tied in here. Uh -huh. See what this is here. It looks like a banner. Podium banner. Carpet shampoo is upstairs. Just a minute. Okay, sorry guys. Um, in the middle of our video here, the 
carpet cleaner showed up and if he starts roaring that carpet on the rug upstairs you won't be able to appreciate the video I'm sure so he's going to work up on the second floor first and hopefully that'll be alright so anyhow you don't care about that but um, it looks like we've got a, a, a banner here I'm sending my father's flag that he brought home from World War II okay guys here we go Let's see what we got here. Yeah, this is wow. a, it's it's a podium banner. Yeah, it's it? huge. Yeah, it's a very large podium banner. Well, the fringe is on the bottom, Pop, you know. Yeah, I've got it backwards here. It's got a couple stains on it, but man, that's big yeah, for a podium a, it has banner. a couple of stains, but still, it's a, it's a nice banner. It's still got a nice brilliance to it. Yeah. Anything on the back? Yeah, I see something here on the... On the bottom of it, on the back. Let's see, where did I see that? I saw something. Yeah, here it is. Here, it's got a sewn, um, yeah. I guess, an ID number or something. Inventory or lot number, yeah. And yeah, maybe related to the. I think uh, I saw an ink stamp on there too. Take another look. An ink stamp? Yeah. Oh yeah, boy, you got a good eye. It looks like the same number stamped and inked on it. Yeah. Yeah. So this must have been the uh, the party banner, and uh, they paid good money for it. So oh. they marked it as inventory as something that they own. All uh, um, are all the rings on it, Pop? Uh, one, two, three. Yeah, it's got three rings across the top of it. And it's a it's a separate uh, field with a printed swaz. So let's take a look at the fringe. All right, fringe looks good. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a nice piece. Yeah, it's a, it's a shame about the stains, but uh, maybe yeah. that adds a little character yeah. to it too. Do? It was a war, by the way. <laughs> yeah. So there we go. That's a that's a good thing. That looks like one that like hung from a. Uh, like a banister or something like that in a building. It's yeah, big. It's, big. Uh, it's too big to be a podium they, banner. Maybe they had a uh, uh, a fat um, <laughs> a chief head of the uh, political group there, and he needed a wide podium. So that was the Rome uh, podium yeah, banner. Yeah, it was, it was the, the Goering. <laughs> yeah, Goering. <laughs> <laughs> oh, come on, Ob. This is silly now. <laughs> what are they going to do? <laughs> <laughs> what are you going to do? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I, I, I kind of like that, and I like the fact that it came um, uh, right from the man's father, too, so it's never been in a collection. So that's, uh, that's kind of cool, guys. Nothing to go crazy about. It's only a podium banner, but it, um, a lot of guys use them to accent their collection. You know, they're not too big. And they, hey, it's uh, right out of the woodwork. Yes, yeah, right out of the so. woodwork. Some guys may have just thrown it out, but... Oh, I'm sure uh, if they didn't throw it out, their the wives did. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, let's see what we got here next. Yep. Here we go. The Bob Burns cutter. Yep. Yeah, my my drink is weakening up terrible. Mm. Oh, water. Mm. I think I'll make another drink. How's your drink, Bob? Oh, I made a freshie when you took that break. The uh, the oh, carpet guy. The carpet cleaner break. Mm. Well, now the Wehrmacht blanket uh, has ice cubes on it. Oh, uh, well. And so does your drink now, can't, too. Can't do, <laughs> yeah, now I have Wehrmacht blanket in my drink. <laughs> Alcohol kills the germs. Oh, might help to put a little booze in there, wouldn't it? Boy, you better slow down. I haven't even started yet. <laughs> I haven't even started yet. Give me a break. It's just all these distractions, I guess, Ob. We need a bartender on the side. That's all we got to do. Uh, yeah. Anybody out there want to be a bartender <laughs> yeah. for these videos? Get a nice blonde, put her in an SS yeah, uniform. Yeah, blonde with a nice <laughs> low-cut outfit, and maybe she could wear one of those uh, boxes with the cigars in them, too, yeah. you know? <laughs> Boy, I don't think our budget would cover it. No, probably not. <laughs> uh, 
I don't think Marie would be too happy about that either. <laughs> Could be some trouble there. It's all business. All business, yeah, just strictly business. <laughs> just strictly business, guys. Well, let's see what we got here. Looks like some kind of a dagger. Oh. Ah, yes. What is that? Aha. Uh -huh. <laughs> If you can notice here, the swaz is over here instead of over here. Hold on one second. Uh, so he's got it all um, taped together. He wants this repaired. Oh, yeah. That's what it is. It's just repair. And it looks like a nice dagger. And I think it was a clean break, so it should be able to be um, fixed. Yeah, this happens. Yeah. Such a nice dagger. It's I don't think shame. it was denazified. I think it was just uh, no. It just, just broke. broke off. What's the maker on that? Sometimes you gotta watch that with those uh, army swazes. They really yeah. can catch that lip, and that's it. Well, it, it looks like a um, a generic uh, cross guard, but it's an early dagger. It's got really nice silvering, and uh, I remember when he sent me the pictures when I looked at the break on the uh, wreath. Uh, it looked like it matched right up with the break under the uh, eagle, so I think we can uh, we can repair that. It's we'll, meticulous we'll work, but it can be done. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Well, there we go. That's nothing too thrilling, guys. But uh, like I say, I don't know what's in the boxes either. So, but we'll see what we can do with that. Uh, in my opinion. Some collectors will say, oh, why don't you just change the cross guard? Well, uh, you could change the cross guard as long as the cross guard you use is the same maker, the same vintage, the same patina, blah, blah, blah. But if it can be repaired where it's virtually undetectable, I still think that's better yeah. than, uh, than changing the cross guard. But it's up to you. Everybody yeah. has their own taste with yeah. things like that. A lot that. of people are like, oh, all those cross guards are exactly the same. What are you talking about? You know, well, yeah, they're, 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 not, they're not. They're not. They're not. But, um, you know, I don't have a problem with, uh, let's just say as an example, you have a icorn with a last type cross guard that was used and the, the swaz is broken off and the swaz is lost. Well, using an icorn cross guard from the same vintage and it has the same patina to it, I, I don't see a problem with that. No, it's just there. a spare part. There's nothing wrong yeah, with that. Nothing wrong with that. Mm. Wow, nothing wrong with this either. That second drink's a little better than the first. Well, let's see what else we got here. So far, I haven't seen anything odd that we can retire on. <clears throat> But we didn't want to retire anyhow. Ob's too young and so am I. <laughs> you know that some lady helped me out of the post office today because she thought that my bag was too heavy. I had a couple boxes in it. Uh, hey, how I about, how do you think you feel bad? How about the lady who thought we were twins? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I, was, uh, I didn't, you know, she's, oh, can I, can I help you, sir? It looks like a heavy bag, and she's holding onto my shoulder, and, um, I, um, you know, I looked at her, and, um, you know, she was 75 or 76. And, uh, I was going to uh, say, was she already, you could have really milked that. Yeah, well. I mean, just, uh, uh, but that's one thing that's nice when you get old, people want to give you assistance. Uh, Every time I go into the post office, my friend Dave in there, he says I'm going over at my over at my um, mailbox, opening it up with my key, and he comes over. Says, Are you all right, Tom? I said, Yeah, I'm all right. He says, Oh, good. I'm just checking on the elderly. <laughs> yeah. Oh, thanks, Dave. He's just looking for a Christmas tip. <laughs> yeah. That's what he is. Oh, God. Oh, it looks like we got a couple of pieces here with some pretty nice bags. Yeah, I like the bags. Yeah, I like the bags a lot. Let's see, we got an older bag here and a newer bag. Uh, we changed the logo or something somewhere along the line. Let's see what's. Uh, we'll start with the older one. Oh, wow, we got a variety of cool stuff here. Cornucopia. Yeah. Oh, that's a nice um, a nice uh, Luftwaffe buckle here. Um, 
with the um, the leather strap on it and all. Uh, that's pretty nice. I don't know whether it's marked on the back. Maybe yeah, the camera can see. It's got a nice look to it. I like that one. Yeah, no question. That's a that's a real thing. Yeah, I like that. And Just give me a sec. No, I don't see any marks. No. Maybe on the leather, but no. Nah, sometimes they are, sometimes they aren't. Nice, nice uh, buckle though. And there's the, this is just an aluminum Luftwaffe mess, mess hole um, tablespoon. Not of uh, great value, but it's neat to have one. And then we have a um, what appears to be a uh, a pretty nice um, Luftwaffe dagger uh, with the hangers and the porta pee. Uh, and of course, Ob, it's in the, the scabbard backwards, backwards yeah. isn't it? Yeah, of course. <laughs> I love it. I love it. But the scabbard's okay. Scabbard's nice. Fittings are nice. Has a nice um, orange grip. And uh, the original Porta P is very, very nice. So we're one for two today, and the other, the other one was incorrectly, but the swastika was broken off. Of yeah. <laughs> Let's see what the blade is here. Yeah, the blade's good. Um, oh yeah, this is a nice Wiresberg with a Waffen amp on the on the cross guard. So it's a nickel plated blade. Well, this uh, is coming off to me as some kind of grouping. We got a Luft. Oh, uh, I don't Luft know. Messel, Luft buckle. Well, or, uh, maybe a guy just likes Luftwaffe stuff. Uh, the scabbard's in nice condition, and uh, uh, there's that, the way the cross guard protected the original silvering there. So that's a nice dagger. And you're putting it in backwards again, your bad as him? Well, it's the way he had it. <laughs> okay, put it in right here. There we go, guys. Well, it fits. You didn't break uh, the swastika off either. Huh? No. And a beautiful... Um, Beautiful set of hangers with it. Man, look at those. Those are really, really nice. Uh, look at the brocade and the, the buckles and the reverse has nice velvet. Shows hardly any wear. Yeah, I like those hangers a lot. You like them, Ob? Yeah. Yeah. Always good to have hangers. And then for luck, he throws in a, um, a nice um, SA. Wow, there's a, there's a real old um, oh, yeah. issue. Issue uh, tag like that stitching on it. too. Boy, that's that's done well. Yeah, but that's a nice. Uh, as it say, yeah, it's all separate field yeah. and separate swaths. That's that's not a bad armband at all. Shows some wear, but um, hey, it comes from the time. Yeah, and uh, then here's uh, uh, some velvet. <laughs> with some insignia and stick pins on it. Looks like a nice um, NCO breast eagle there with a couple of interesting Luftwaffe. It's an early droop eagle. Yeah, the droop tail. Yeah, this one here is really yeah. nice. That's yeah, a, those are nice. Yeah, they're, they're pretty nice. Hey, yeah, it says something about all the stuff, but uh, uh, here's something I ever knew. The air, second model Nazi Germany Air Force Luftwaffe dagger adopted in 1937. I didn't know that, Ob. I'm glad he told me that. <laughs> and uh, well, maybe uh, maybe. that's all right, though. He's not. He's just trying to be nice, and I'm being sarcastic and not being nice. So being that's not good. <laughs> that's not good. So yeah, th those are uh, those are all. Um, all good items there. That belt buckle is nice too. I like that. Love the hangers and the uh, Luftwaffe. Does he say if it's a grouping or not? It's, it's not a grouping, but it's, he likes Luftwaffe stuff. Okay. And then there's another bag here. Let's see what's here. Oh, uh, now here's an army grouping. Uh -huh. hey, you might be right. Yeah, I think I'm right. He is affected by groupings. Yeah. <laughs> You know what it is? He probably had a small collection of these uh -huh. things, and now he's decided to move on to something else. But uh, well, here's a very, very nice um, Army officer dagger in the scabbard the right way. I thought so. Yeah, this is a um, that's an earlier um, Icorn Eagle. Very, very nice. Nice patina. And the uh, the scabbard is uh, is nice too. Nice icorn scabbard. Let me see that cross guard again. 
Yeah. That's a, I think uh, Icorn actually, uh, if you look at all the subtle variations, there were four or five different cross cars they made, but that's, that's, uh, that's one of the earlier ones. Why so many? I mean, there wasn't even that much time. Why well, five everyone, times? every one that they made was made simpler than the one before, so it was a money-saving thing. The you know, remember was, to the have war this was guy, raging, uh, yeah. this, the chiseler, can you imagine <laughs> him, he's working, you know, you got four or five of these chiselers working for eight hours a day. If you could make a cross guard that didn't involve that much finishing, you may get rid of four of those chiselers, you know. Let some other factory hire them. So, uh, just like any business, the dagger business was the same. You have to cut costs where you can. A lot of chiselers in this business. <laughs> <laughs> uh, here's to you, Rob. Yep. Yeah. Can you do any better on the price, Whitman? Oh, you're making a fortune on this. You should be able to cut the price. Thank you, sir. No, that's the price. Hmm. Yeah, some of the chiselers will drive you to drinking. <laughs> no doubt about it. But that's a um, that's a very very fine. Um, yeah, look at the shot of the blade. Yeah. Very very fine piece there. Yeah, it's, it's in mint. Uh, it's mint. Mint condition. Yeah, that's a very very with a fine portapi too. And flip it. Yep. I like how the 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 back of the cross guard is all black. Yeah, that's a really nice dagger. Yeah, I mean it's a, it's an army acorn, but still, it's, yeah, it's uh, a common maker, but yeah. it's a, in that condition, it's it's really nice. And let's see what else is in this treasure sack here. Uh, another great um, buckle. Uh, this one has still got most of the green paint yeah. in the uh, in the recesses, anyhow. Um, and it's got the leather tab, and the leather tab is maker mark too. May even have the date on it, I don't know. So this collector got the dagger, got the belt buckle, hangers, right. of course. Right. And then a couple stick pins and an armband for every one. And a breast eagle. And a breast eagle. Yep. I mean, that's a good way to collect. You know, think about that, guys. Uh, if you're on a budget, isn't that a neat thing to do? You get an army dagger, then try to get some other things related to the army, and then put it all in a little case. You know, you got it's nice thing. Yeah. And let's see, the hangers on this are beauties. Wow. You know what, too, guys? These hangers. General? No. That's what everybody's going to say. Oh, they're generals. No. Remember, this was an. I told you this was an early Icorn Army dagger. These hangers are real early, and they're made out of brass. Ah, that's it. The yeah. hardware is all brass. And they did that initially. Even the tab on the top is brass. Um, so you can say that the <clears throat> that was uh, probably came original with the dagger. This is a set that's always well. Been you you could say that, or you can say that the collector is very sophisticated, yeah. and he looked for a long time to find the proper hangers that would go with the dagger. Which these are rare hangers. When you see these old brass hardware hangers like this, and look at the brocade too. Would you say they're worth a couple bucks more than the regular set? Oh, absolutely, yeah. Yeah, by how much? Well, a set like this with old brass, I mean, you may be looking at three hundred dollars, three hundred fifty dollars, because the condition too. Look at the reverse of them. Yeah, and it's got great wear on them too. I think. Yeah, just beautiful. I mean, if somebody has a real early dagger, that's the kind of hangers you want to find for it, which are hard to find. Well, we'll just leave it with so the dagger. So this, um, this fella was quite sophisticated. Yeah. And what else you got in there, Pop? Well, a very nice uh, breast eagle. It's, still, it's an NCO, but it's a real high quality NCO. Very, very nice. And, uh, uh, we have a, uh, a veteran's uh, armband with the um, uh, the um, memorial, veteran's memorial there. That's the second style, but it's in perfect condition. Some paper in here. I don't know what the, oh, the, <laughs> it's, a, yeah, it's an a, HJ <laughs> insignia in there. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's cool. That's cool. Still with a tag on the back. 
Yeah, that's a sleeve eagle. Yeah. Everybody uh, puts a HJ insignia inside of their <laughs> veteran's armband. Who doesn't? Who doesn't, yeah. And then again, he uh, he threw in a couple of more nice um, stick pins. Yeah, they're nice, too. Yeah. yeah, this one I've never seen before. These are quite common, but the, that early brass one of the Veterans Memorial. Yeah, those are... Uh, yeah, with rifles really, underneath. They're really big for a stick pin. That's... Yeah, they are. You know, that's almost like a metal. <laughs> now, this, uh, this collector was a, um, a very um, thoughtful guy, and I can see he made a plan, and uh, this is what he was going to do. And I guess once he did it, he thought, oh, got to go on to the next group. So maybe he's going to do an RLB grouping now, or he's going to do an RAD grouping, or maybe he'll put a chained SS with an SSEM. Who knows? But uh, this is a, when collectors, <coughs> I talked about it before, what should I collect? This is a perfect example yeah. of what you do. All right, I'm going to do a little Luftwaffe, and he gets gathers this stuff, and I'm going to do a little Army, and he gathers the stuff. I mean, you can do with all of it. Well, what could yeah. be more fun? Yeah, that's cool. Then you get it all done, and you you buy a nice uh, showcase for it, put it up on the wall. And then you go on the show, you're like, oh, I, I need a couple of Army stick pins and, a, um, right. and an RAD armband. and uh, you right. know. That's, <laughs> how, that's how it works. Uh, so I... I um, I take my uh, take my hat off to this fella. He um, he really um, he really knows what he's doing, and uh, everything is authentic in here too. There's nothing that's questionable in the slightest. So congratulations to you, sir, and uh, we'll be happy to handle this stuff for you. Who wouldn't be? When you get good quality things like that, again, in nice condition, everybody wants it. So, if I were just starting out and I wanted an army dagger, I'd like to have that one. Especially with those hangers, too. Wouldn't you, Ub? Yeah, it's a nice nice start. Yeah. So, there we go. Uh, that's a, I didn't know that about the brass hangers. Did the Luftwaffe? Yeah, did, oh yeah, that's... Um, did Luftwaffe do that, too? Uh, no. Remember no. Luftwaffe didn't start to come out till 37. We're talking about the Army Dagger came out in 1935. Yeah, it was really true. early. And uh, the few makers that were participating when they first came out, they're and rushing the, uh, around. Uh, the Luftwaffe uh, first model had a chain, so you didn't need hangers. Right, so, yeah. yeah. And they, you know, they, they were also competing for the marketplace, so... Uh, when these things first came out, they were looking for the best uh, materials, probably for the best price they could get it, uh, so that their product would go above other products. So that's why you'll see these uh, brass-based um, hardware on uh, Army hangers. Um, then after uh, they got orders for a couple hundred thousand Army daggers, they thought, wow. <laughs> We can't make these out of brass anymore. We've got to find another way to do it. And uh, as most of you guys know, the um, the hardware uh, became a, like a pot metal that they just um, uh, put a silvery plating on, which usually came off, uh, not during the period, but 80 years uh, later, most of it's off. So, but these are all um, these are all basic uh, business things that uh, I shouldn't even need to tell you. Hold on, I'm sure. Pit stop. Pit stop? Oh, um, yours is out, Rob? Yeah. You so, want Dad, some, um, want some with, ice the, um, with the issue of the deluxe hangers and how they're more ornate, mm -hmm. was that just something you ordered or is that uh, well, in my opinion, part of your being an you know, officer? We always, or? we always talk about, uh, like with Luftwaffe, uh, we say the deluxe hangers are the ones where the snaps are push-up type instead of push-in and all that. And uh, we call them uh, deluxe, uh, like somebody paid um, somebody paid extra for them or something. Uh, but in my opinion, uh, it was just the way that particular uh, producer, hardware producer, made them. Yeah. Uh, and they probably cost the same amount as the push-in types. So you've never uh, seen a catalog where it was... 
like the lesser and then the deluxe no. offered. No, you just if you do see a, an accoutrement catalog, it'll just show the one type of hangers and they'll have those fittings and that's it, you know. From I that, see. That so, producer. But you know how we are, we uh, oh, all And the dagger are... producer made the hangers too, though. No. Oh, no, they did oh, not. Oh, oh no, no, God. No, oh. No, no, <laughs> oh, no, 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 no. The accoutrements were, most of them were made in uh, Ludenscheid, which was yeah. a town that specialized in that stuff. And all the big companies placed orders with the hanger producers, the accoutrement producers in Ludenscheid. So. Boy, everybody uh, was working back then. Well, uh, just imagine uh, a little city like Soligan. <laughs> Uh, and all of a sudden, wow, mi order for millions of these things, beginning with the, uh, the SAs and the Hitler Youth uh, come in, and uh, then the Army comes in because uh, uh, the Luftwaffe had that. They wanted a dagger, too, and then before you know it, every political, uh, semi-political organization wants um, a dagger. Uh, it must have been a, just an unbelievable heyday uh in fact i don't even know how they did it it just <laughs> is amazing uh, it just is uh, the other day i printed out all the rzm codes because i just wanted a, a, a something i could grab real quick without having to be on a computer make it maybe take it to a show or whatever mm -hmm. it's right there on your on your uh, left it's 18 pages long of just R RZM. rzm codes yeah yeah well remember two collectors um rzm codes um, were unique to the product that they were making. For instance, uh, we see on, on daggers all the time, RZM M7. Well, 7 meant uh, a, uh, a dagger or something of metal. Uh, you'll see um, M5, uh, that was leather. And uh, M2 was something else, so they broke the first th that first digit after the M designated the type of material that they were using. Yeah, what's the uh, musical instruments M11, I think, or something like that? Yeah, yeah. yeah they yeah. all had, uh, <laughs> uh, and they had to uh, they had to submit applications to the RZM on their qualifications to produce uh, a certain product. Um, and remember, the RZM was in control of everything that was used, worn, whatever, by uh, an NSDAP organization. But what's really amazing to me is every one of these is a different little company. Even if they had two employees, there's, you know, 18 pages of RZM codes and companies. And these have all well, employees, uh, and it's amazing. The trick was that, not the trick, but... The point was that if you were not approved by the RZM and given an official number, you could not produce goods for use by the party, period. That was it. So there was plenty of scurrying around to make sure you, oh, who's the RZM official in our town? Oh, uh, uh, Hans, you want to go out to dinner tonight? It's on me, you know, and all that kind of stuff. And, uh, just like any other business and uh, because if you didn't do it you weren't in business you could be the best um, dagger maker in the world the best hanger maker in the world the best leather uh, loop producer or whatever if you did not have the approval of the RZM which meant you had to uh, send your product to the RZM so that they could examine it uh, you were not going to work uh, and when Let's face it, during that day, who was the biggest organization in Germany that was wearing edge weapons and uniform? It was all the party people. So it was uh, suicide not to, uh, not to get the approval by R the RZM. But I think you guys already know all that stuff. I don't know. If you don't, it's, um, it's something you should know. Uh, uh, and it's... Um, it's very important too. Uh, certain certain RCM codes are more desirable than others. Let's say if you're talking about SA daggers or something, you get some 
oddball RZM code that belongs to some crazy mega Clitterman or Moog or something, you know, it, it's, uh, it can become more collectible than, say, a, a common RZM M766, which was Eichhorn. How many codes do you know offhand, do you think? Uh, not very many. Um, Debbie probably knows all the codes because she remembers phone numbers from 20 years ago. <laughs> I go to the Acme and they want my phone number to put in the computer and I have to get my wallet out to look at it. So I'm not much on that kind of stuff. But I do have the, uh, the handy Johnson handbook that, um, that lists all the, all the codes. Well, 98% of them and uh, I just refer to them all the time. Mm. But stuff like this, it's, um, I guess I'm going on and on, it's, uh, but it's, it's, uh, it adds so much to the enjoyment of collecting if you understand the whole process. That well, since on. we're talking RZM codes, when did they become, there's transitional pieces with the maker marks and an RZM code, and then it's strictly an RZM code. When did that happen? when it was all RZM. Well, we see the RZM, um, technically they were organized very, very early on, um, but we don't see them really coming into play until maybe the, um, uh, the early SS daggers with the 120, 121 um, SS codes, which, which were in um, 1934 and they represented um, contracts that the SS gave to several makers but wanted that SS code on it. That's why there's not a maker mark because there were several makers involved with that. So as early as um, 1934 they were coming into play. Then you'll see things like um, I recently had an SS dagger that uh, didn't have a um, uh, an SS code on it, but it had RZM M7, I forget the code, uh, 714, yeah, it was 714, and um, that was in 1936, and it was before the official process had started where uh, contract numbers were ordered through the RZM so that only the RZM appeared, I think it was the Lunar Schlow Stagger, appeared on uh, things. <laughs> so then by 1937, things started to get more stringent. Uh, we want the RZM code on the blade, and uh, manufacturers who had had logos for 100 years in some cases, some even more, uh, that was their identity. But yet the chained SS gets away with it. Not, not even on the Tang. Wouldn't it be great if there was an RZM on the yeah, Tang or a Maker? No, the chained SS's were all contracted originally by the SS. That's why they, and the, a lot of different producers made them. Yeah, but nobody put their name on it. You weren't allowed to because it was a contract. It's probably a huge contract for probably initially a hundred thousand daggers, something like that. They could have put it on the tang and nobody would have known. No, <laughs> you'll see some tang markings, but they're just the forge markings yeah. from the tang. But uh, but then around uh, by say 1938 or 39. Um, they allowed the producers to still use their logo and the RZM mark, but by 1939, it's virtually all just RZM marks, no producer names. 39 and then, yeah. About 39, yeah. Uh, at least that's what I find. Well, let's go to the next box. You're yeah, probably tired on. of Enough hearing RZM codes. You know what it is, Ob? You keep asking these interesting questions, and uh, which is good. That's good. I think collectors like that. Because I never think of that stuff, and you do all the time. We're probably like, I wish I would shut up. <laughs> no, no, well, I know you're still learning, and uh, that's why you ask these things. Let's see what we got next it's here. good conversation, Pop. Oh, well, I got a, got a box here that looks like it came from Europe, and uh, looks like it arrived uh, in pretty good shape. Maybe the fragile sign all over it made some impact uh, or the customs opened it all up and just tied you know mm. you don't know but 
I don't even know how to go about this. this thing Our friends, the custom agents, yeah. I'll just keep sewing away here and see what happens, but... Here, okay. Yeah, it looks like there is a seam here, so maybe the Bob Burns cutter or... Oh man, I'm telling you, I'm living right here. Must be I had just enough to drink. <laughs> Cheers to you guys. Mm. Yeah, you got about a half a tank left there. Yeah. A lot of guys write and say they they like to make a drink too while they're watching the video. Uh, I think that's uh, that's okay, isn't it? That's, yeah. Uh, um, we do it not because we have to drink during the video. It's to kind of give an air of fun to things. They'll and, probably make a drinking game out of it. Every time you say Bill Burns Cutter, they'll take a shot. <laughs> <laughs> You might be right of. And I know some of you guys don't like it, but uh, we're just we're just people. We just this is the way we enjoy our life, and uh, uh, we have a good time. Uh, we don't drink during the day. Only when we make videos. <laughs> Except for Rob, I think he sneaks one in once in a while. But my uh, process, I start at uh, five o'clock. Marie and I have a, a cocktail in my bar, and uh, then we have, uh, have dinner about 6.30, and then that's the end of it. So what do I have? Two or three drinks at night? So I don't think that's too bad, but mm. I ought to have more. This is uh, good stuff. I'm not drinking enough. Here. Well, I got two boxes. It looks like inside of one box. So that's kind of cool, and some kind of letter. Uh, well, I don't know. Let's see what it says there. I don't want to read the letter. Let's see what's in the box. But it looks like a nice letter, though. I must say. I always like friendly letters. Um, you know, what's the point of uh, of not being friendly? You know, and most people really are. I said before too, collectors are boy, they're the nicest people, gentlemen. Haven't had a bounce check in 30 years, I don't think. Now I'll get one next week. Okay. Now they're really a good bunch of guys. And you know what? I try to be nice to everybody too, and at least I do my best to, to do that. And now let's see what we got here. Another nice, uh, another nice bag. And Good bubble wrap job here with a lot, a lot of tape around it. I like that. Let's see what this is. What do you think, collectors? It looks like some kind of dish or a bowl or something. I don't know. We're going to see in a second here, I think. After this. Hmm. Well, we still don't know because we have another bag. <laughs> but that's a good way to pack things. It's nicely done because this is probably something that uh, could easily get broken if you're not careful. And we don't want that. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. Mycin. Oh, my goodness. Bob, you got the eye. Yeah. Yeah, it looks like a red dragon mycin piece, yeah, but look at the bowl. size of it. Never seen that before. That Not is that one. huge. You know, the mycin stuff that came back, most of it's kind of small, you know, dishes and saucers and little cups because uh, the smallness was easier to send home, but something like this. Got the right mark, Pop? There's the mark, Ob. <clears throat> is that the period mark? Uh, let me see it. Looks period to me from here. Yep, that's it. That's it, yeah. Wow, that's uh, 
that's a beautiful, beautiful plate. I can see why uh, this man went through that trouble to wrap it up. Yeah, I've never seen uh, that bowl before. I've never seen a bowl this big, and um, uh, for you guys that don't know, uh, this red dragon uh, pattern of uh, mice in China uh, was used up in the um, tea house on top of the mountain. The house that was built for Hitler to entertain in, which he, I think he was there six times. <laughs> but uh, Ava and her sister and so forth used it a lot. Uh, this is really, really a very, very beautiful and a very valuable, uh, very valuable plate. Yeah, that's a nice piece. Wow. I guess something like this, uh, what would you think, um, vegetables or fruit or who knows? Uh, I really don't know, Pop. But that's a, that's a very beautiful thing. I'm going to put it back in this bag and... Uh, and try not to don't drop it. Try not to <laughs> drop it. Yeah, uh, it's in perfect condition. I don't know. It almost looks like something like you put a pitcher in or something like that. You want to eat out of it, is what I'm saying. It's like well, no, no, it's more oh, like no. a vessel much, for much a, too yeah. big for that. Um, like a pitcher uh, of water, or I don't know. I mean, it. it I I don't think that uh, because a pitcher could break something like that. I I I think it's um. Uh, it's used for serving something, uh, but um, I don't know whether the Germans really piled stuff up, you know, like you say, <laughs> oh, there's, there's some really good potatoes in there, you know, like we would do in America. But they didn't do that in the 30s like, like we do, you know. People didn't eat as much as we do today. <laughs> you know, something like this is, it would be huge um, uh, back in the 30s. So uh, what it was really for, I don't know, but uh, what a beautiful... Um, we'll just chalk it up the wiener schnitzel. Well, well, that's maybe what it could have <laughs> held a, a, a big bowl of uh, wiener schnitzel because you wouldn't really put that on a meat tray. You know, yeah, you, then you just grab you it out of there. In, yeah. You know, it, I mean, it's possible. It's a serving tray, yeah. yeah. We'll go with that. But whatever it is, that's a that's a very rare piece. Uh, uh, Ob and I, we've had a lot of Mycin over the years, and we like mycin. It's uh, uh, and the red, the red dragon pattern was a, it's very rare, and it was only used up there at the uh, at the mountaintop. So it's fun to uh, fun to get that, and we have uh, a number of collectors that uh, really appreciate it. So now, what could be here? Uh, we shall see. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, I figured my Denobly went out. Mm hmm. You know, a lot of you collectors, too, have written in that you're smoking Denobly's, which I think <laughs> is really. Because they, they're somewhat hard to get, but you know, I found you can get them on the internet. You can get them on the internet. And um, they're not, you know, I like big cigars too, but I like these during the day. They're very, uh, they have a little touch of anisette in them. And I, I think they're very, very good. Uh, but you shouldn't inhale them like I do. But uh, anyhow, here we go. Let's see what else we got from this man. So far, I'm pretty impressed with that uh, that mice and plate. Did you like that, Ob? Yeah. Yeah, I did too. <clears throat> Never seen a bowl that big. No, before. I haven't either. They got some really nice uh, vases too. Some nice what? Vases or vases? Oh yeah, those vases. Yeah. Yeah. You yeah, see that doll commercial where he's like vases? Yeah. <laughs> Vase. Yeah. Oh, it is a vase. It's not a vase. It's a vase. Well, it depends if you're from Jersey or not. <laughs> if it's a knickknack, it's a vase. <laughs> yeah. If it's something good, it's a vase. There you go. <laughs> Isn't that the way things vase. are? Yeah. Yeah. Got to give it a fancier uh, 
You can't change the name, but you can change the sound of it and make it sound better. Oh, I'm sorry guys, I do go on with all this stuff. Now what is this? I can't figure out how to get this open. There is no way to get this open. Oh, I just have to cut the cut the plastic and hope for the best. Well, if it's on the same same uh, path as the other piece, it's probably something very very nice. <laughs> uh, this is. <laughs> Well, oh, there you go. I'm just talking about cigars, too. Now you got a new ashtray for the show. I would hate to put a Denobili in this. This is warranted much better. Boy, that's a nice ashtray. Something tells me Meissen didn't make that one. No. <laughs> this was made by Wade in England. Oh, isn't that nice? Yeah. Uh, let me just uh, let me just look at the that letter that was in with all this, maybe there's something about it that I don't know, but uh, I think this is a gift, but, uh, and, and, and if it is, um, thank you, sir, um, I'm very, very impressed with it. Don't you like that, Ob? Yeah. And, you know, with the cigar ashtray collectors, the little slot is bigger. <laughs> No cigarettes allowed. Yeah, I can get about one. a thousand butts in that thing. Yeah. <laughs> no, that's beautiful. Um, thank you, sir. Well, you have very good taste, sir. Not only in your mycin, but in the cigar. <laughs> well, I guess we're going to have to retire your mother's ashtray that you use. For that. <laughs> yeah, this thing doesn't really come up to that, does it? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'm embarrassed. Yeah. Isn't that nice? Thank you, sir. Well, you better come out with a chained SS or something real soon, I'll tell you that. <laughs> <laughs> okay, guys, uh, we're, well, we're down to the last box. and had a little something on my drink here. How's your drink, Ob? All right, is it? Well, we'll freshen it up for the end here. All right. We, um, I guess we talked and talked. A lot here, and uh, you're still talking, and still talking. And <laughs> haven't shown you guys anything really, just some normal stuff. Yeah, but, some good stuff in there. But maybe the, um, I think I'll be asked some really good questions, and uh, I hope I was able to answer them to your satisfaction. But uh, that's part of what we want to do too, you know. Uh, uh, my purpose of doing these videos was to try to. Um, share uh, some of the things that that I've picked up over these years because I'm getting older and uh, uh, I think everybody should uh, should know some of these things that maybe I've learned that they haven't learned so I find it amazing that the uh, dagger makers don't didn't make their own hangers that's no no it just doesn't make sense no, does it not one dagger producer made his hangers no that was a uh, boy. Here's a here's a letter that goes on and on. It says, "Guess what? Not a dagger." Well, I'm not going <laughs> to. Maybe we shouldn't even open yeah, this. I know. Side, I don't know. Maybe it is a dead cat. Yeah, maybe it's a, finally the dead cat. Boy, there's a lot of paper in here, and uh, I don't know what else. Man, this is. Definitely not a dagger. He's right about that. It's a mess. It's a mess, yeah. <laughs> oh my, I have no idea what this is. I guess I better read his letter. Let me get this box out of here and see what this is. Boy, it's the most unusual. It looks rather religious. 
What the heck is that? Let's see what he says here. Ob doesn't know what it is either. This appears to be a Bible cover from the period of Charlemagne. But it is actually a plaster copy made by something, uh, Baffin State Museum, and I think 1944. On the back there is some... Da -da 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 -da. Charlemagne is generally credited as the king that uh, pulled Europe out of the Dark Ages. Well, that's true. The Bible careers are usually... I don't know what all this is. I think it's some kind of historical piece here. It's a book cover is what it is. See the hinges? You know, I think you're right, Ob. Yeah, it's hinged. It was probably on a, probably on a, on a cover Bible. Of a very, very fancy book. On a Bible. Maybe a Bible, yeah. And some GI cut the cover off of the off of the Bible. That's what I think it is. Look at all yeah, this. It's beautifully it's made done. out of. I don't know. Is that ivory? I mean that's ivory. Whew. It's not heavy it enough can't for be, ivory, yeah. no. It's um it may be plaster, but it's um, look they got the fallen angels on there and the ascension here. Yeah. This it's totally religious. You're absolutely and, uh, right, Ob. These are hinges. Yeah, that's a hinge. It's probably from an old yeah. Bible. That's yeah. uh you know, for there, all we know, it's some... Uh, the, the crucifixion's right there. It may have come from some tremendously valuable thing, and some GI just uh, yeah. cut the cover off. Oh, great, and, uh, somebody's going to be calling us. We want our cover back. Yeah. Wow. Well, What's the uh, opposite side of the reverse look like? Okay, Pop, let's uh, turn that thing around. Well, uh, we're just looking at it, and uh, you had a lot of, lot of comments. Um, uh, what are some of the scenes here on it? Well, it's basically the story of Christ and uh, the 12 disciples and then the crucifixion and the ascension. Yeah, and we um, we looked on the reverse of this too, uh, which is really quite interesting. Do I have it the right way, Ob? Yeah. But you'll see uh, there there's a, um, a political stamp on the back of it. Now that's amazing. So apparently this um, this cast was made um, during the Third Reich time. Huh. That's something? Yeah, we'll have to look further into that one. Yeah. Well, we got some cool stuff here. Uh, I don't, <laughs> Who knows where this hobby's going to go? I don't know. But stuff like this is very interesting to me and uh, should be to you too. I would love to see the Bible itself that this was cast from. That must be really, really something. Uh, who knows what's uh, what's going to come in here? Oh yeah, I see the crucifixion here. And uh, this is probably a great. Um, that area is coming look, off. It looks wonderful. Coming off it? the cross. Uh, I'll have to. Uh, I have a friend that's a fellow collector. That's a priest. Oh yeah. And Father, uh, yep. I wonder whether Father would um, be able to tell me anything about this, because uh, it's um, it's very very interesting uh, item. Um, yeah, he says it's uh, it's talking about Charlemagne. Well, Charlemagne established the first Reich and so forth. Uh, uh, this guy makes a statement that he was credited as the king that pulled Europe out of the Dark Ages. Well, Charlemagne lived around 700, I think. Uh, it's a lot of Dark Ages after that. But um, so, but anyhow, um, if anybody can help us with that, we'd be, um, be thankful. Uh, and um, I guess we don't have a, a sensational dagger to wrap up this video, but um, uh, still I think there was a lot of, a lot of no, not a lot, but some interesting things, and uh, and uh, I'll be asked some good questions, and I hope I gave reasonable answers. And uh, again, thanks for watching, guys. And uh, if we can help you with anything, send me an email. It's always a pleasure, and uh, I hope you're doing good. And come to the Mac show too, please. Thank you.